So we will look today at a few things to try with Oct from Instruo and DivKid. Most of the ideas will work also in hardware. And Oct is basically eight bipolar triangle LFOs that are not synced and are perfect for adding movement and keeping your patches organic and alive. Something that's always fun doing is using LFOs to create arpeggios. So here I'm mixing a few waveforms of the TSL oscillator. And I also have Blick from Vult. Um, this is being mixed into Freak, also from Vult. In this case, it's a low pass stereo filter. And it's going through some reverb. For now, the wet is all the way down, so it's 100% dry. So usually the LFO will go through some sort of attenuation to control the range and the quantizer to keep everything in scale. So let's send the first two outputs of Oct to the dual attenuverter from the FACO that I have here. Let's unmute the voices. And now let's open the attenuverters, maybe also offset them a bit. And this can be quite interesting because the LFOs of Oct are not synced, so the arpeggios will run at different rates and will phase in and out of one another. But what I like doing is sampling the signals with sample and hold, so the rhythm, the rate will stay constant, but the notes will drift in and out and change every now and then. So let's send the signals first through sample and hold. So they're going first, first through sample and hold, and I will use a clock to trigger the sample and hold. And now we get something a bit more stable, but full of movement. The notes will change every now and then. And of course you can do this with more voices. Uh, for now, let's add some reverb. We can also use Oct to animate the voices a bit through their CV inputs. So here we have the fold CV input. And let's use this one and the PWM CV input. And also the ones from Blick. We can also modulate the two channels of Freak and separately from one another to add motion in the stereo field. Another interesting way of generating pitch information is by mixing a few of the signals from Oct and sample them. So here I'm using the VCV mixer to mix a few of the LFOs, four LFOs. You can see the results on the scope. This is going to sample and hold and to a quantizer so we can stay in a certain scale. As our voice, we have a toner going through Vinca, which is a VCA, and says the envelope is opening the VCA. Now, one thing is missing, and that's a trigger for the sample and hold. So in this case, let's use the first LFO from Oct to trigger the sample and hold. And we get a sequence. Now there are a few things we can do to add motion to this voice. First of all, let's modulate with another LFO, the wave folding. We can also modulate the amplitude of the mixed signal. So let's modulate two of the channels. And to make this even more interesting, we can use the mixed signal to modulate the rate of Oct. And open the attenuator just a bit. We can also use this, um, um, one of the signals from the mixer to modulate, for example, the decay time of the envelope. Let's 
אדו עושה סתם דיליי אנד טריוורב פור פאן. Something interesting we can do with Oct is bringing voices in and out and pen them in the stereo field. And again, since the different LFOs are not synced to one another, we can get really organic motion in the patch. So here I have the beautiful sequencer from Scanner Darkly. It's called Orca's Heart. And I have four small oscillators from Bog Audio. Two are generating um, triangle waves and two sine waves. And I'm sending them to the VCV mixer. In this case, it's not for mixing, uh, but rather uh, for having four VCAs. Now the voices from there are going to soundstage. Super interesting reverb from VCV. We can listen to the different sequences. This is the first one. And another one. So we have basically... Four different sequences, two with triangle waves and two with sine waves. And now we can utilize Oct to bring the voices in and out. Um, but there is something to keep in mind here. And that's the fact that Oct will output bipolar signals, as you can see here on the scope. Which means that whenever the signal goes below zero, there will be no change in amplitude. You can see this also on the VCA. You can see it goes only up to... 5 volts in this case, and when it goes below zero, there is no change in amplitude. There are a few ways to deal with this. Uh, you can use uh, attenuverters and offset the signal, like I'm doing here with uh, Befaco Dual Attenuverter. You can see the VCA is uh, opening fully. And you can also use voltage controlled polarizers like blinds, for example, from mutable instruments to have change in amplitude also with negative voltages, as you can see here on the scope. When the LFO is below zero, there is still change in amplitude. The signal is just being inverted. But in this setup, like I have here, um, I can just amplify the voices from the mixer or from soundstage. And um, so there's no need for offsetting the signals or something similar. So let's use four LFOs to bring the voices in and out through the CV inputs. I will use uh, those four, one, two, three, and four. And let's start bringing the levels up here on, on uh, soundstage. Now another fun thing is to modulate the panning of the voices. This I can do within soundstage in this case, but it's also possible with a mixer of some sort that has CV inputs for the panning. So let's do something like this. Let's do um, the X axis with those two LFOs and then the Y with those two. And I can have more modulation. You can see everything here is moving and panning. I hope you are with headphones. We can also feedback modulate um, Oct for getting even more movement. So let's use a slower one and open the attenuverter just a tiny bit. Just to have more movement. Now in case of this sequencer, the Orca's heart, I can also modulate or control the octaves. So let's use another LFO, maybe the third one, to bring up uh, the octaves of the first quantizer here. So 
So since we have 8 different LFOs, a nice thing can be to switch between the LFOs and get different rhythmic results, but an even more interesting thing to do is to cross fade between those signals. So in VCV we have, for example, pulsars from the geodesics. Pulsars is a switch with the ability to cross fade and scan between the signals. So let's send the LFO or the different LFOs to the upper part. In this case, we have eight inputs and one output. I have here a sequence with the TSL going through try or tray, being sequenced by the grid sequencer from JW, going through some reverb. This is how it will sound like. Now let's use the signal from pulsars to modulate the cutoff point of the filter. And we will use another NFO uh, to enable the scanning through the rotation input. You can see it's rotating here and scanning morphing between those LFOs. We can also activate the supernova mode, um, which will randomly scan between the signals. You can see now it's jumping between the different signals. By the way, if you want to do this in hardware, there's the new morphing mixer from Geranolog that I guess can do something similar. And also frames for mutable instruments can work. Now the lower part of pulsars is also a switch, but in this case we have um, one input and eight outputs, so we can send one signal to multiple destinations, again while morphing between those outputs. So let's use another LFO to the input. And now let's send it once, uh, for example, to the wave uh, shaping CV input, to the PWM CV input, and we can also use one and modulate the rate of oct. Let's open the attenuator just a bit. So now we get even more movement, more variation. Now here we can activate the cosmic void, which will uh, morph also through the empty outputs. And again the supernova, so it will do this also randomly. And let's send also another output to the octave input of the sequencer, so the voice will go up and down in octaves, according to this LFO, when it's being switched to. Something that can be nice for generative patches is using a slope detector and comparators with OCT. So here we have a slope detector. Basically, we will get a gate at different stages according to the LFO. So for example, we will get a gate that will stay high as long as the LFO is rising, as you can see here on the scope. And the same with the falling, just that we will get a gate as long as the LFO is going down or falling. And with the comparator, we can set a threshold. In this case, it's positive three volts. And whenever the LFO will cross this line, will cross this threshold, we will get a gate from either the over or under outputs. So here you can see, we get a gate whenever the LFO is going over three volts, which is this line here, if I use the under output, the gate will stay open as long as the LFO is below 3 volts. Um, if you're interested, I have a video all about comparators, there will be a link in the description to it. Um, so here I have an example, I have here Blick from Vult going through a VCA, and I have size or says opening this VCA, and it's going through some delay with Sangster and reverb, sounds like this. And you can hear that sometimes the voice will come in quickly and sometimes more slowly. 
and that's thanks to the slope detector. So I'm sending one LFO to the input of the slope detector. Uh, slope detector, this is also the one you can see here on the scope. And the rising output, so whenever this LFO is rising, it will trigger a sample and hold that is modulating the rate of oct. So with each cycle, the frequency of the LFO changes. And the falling output is a gating um, says. So we get again with each cycle a different envelope that again is opening the VCA. Now the falling output is also triggering another sample and hold that generates pitch information. So uh, we get a new note with each cycle as well. Now here I have also a comparator and I'm using it to compare two LFOs. So one LFO is going to the input, another LFO is going to the threshold CV input. And you can see on the scope that we get basically random gates. And again, I'm using one output to trigger an envelope. I have here an a, a, AD envelope from Nischi. In this case, we have the TSL as our voice. And another gate output is triggering a sample and hold that generates speech information. But also here, uh, one sample and hold is modulating the attack time. So with each cycle, we get different results. So let's listen to this. So since OCT is outputting triangle waves, it's possible to use it also as a clock source. Now in VCV it's not such an issue when using triangle waves as clocks, but in hardware you might get different results depending on what you are clocking. And, but it can still be interesting, so here I'm clocking four different sequencers, four ADDR sequencers, each one has different length, different amount of steps, here we have five, eight, seven and six steps and they will come in and out of phase with each other and create a nice texture now this will sequence four voices i have here four fm operators and oct will also modulate their brightness through the feedback input so the voices will come in and out of focus as well according to high uh, to how uh, bright they are so let's listen to this um, um here are the first two voices, penned left and right. Then I have here another voice which is an octave lower. And again, since oct or the LFOs of oct are not synced in any way, also the sequences are not synced. And the last sequence is an octave higher and it also goes through some delay. And you can hear how um, each one of them is becoming brighter and darker according to oct as well. A nice feature of OCT is the ability to sort of freeze when modulating the rate all the way down, for example with the gate. So here I have one LFO going to the scope, this is the blue trace, and I can send the gate from this manual gate module, this will be the pink trace, it's going to the CV input, and the attenuverter is all the way open all the way to the left. So as soon as I open a gate and as long as I leave it open, um, the LFO or OCT will be frozen and you can see this on the scope just like this and you can see there is no movement when the gate is high very nice so here down i have the tsl here um, and i'm mixing a few waveforms through a low pass filter this is how it will sound like <laughs> 
For now we have OCT modulating the cutoff point of this filter. And now we can add a rhythmic element to it by gating uh, the CV input. So here I have a Euclidean sequence ready. Let's use the gate output again to the CV input, to the rate CV input of OCT. And now open the attenuverter all the way to the left. And we get a more rhythmic result. You can see this also on the scope. Because again, as long as the gate is high, um, OCT will be frozen. And now uh, we can use this rhythm for other voices as well. So here I have another voice with a percussive vibration going through some delay with Chronoblob 2. And I will use the same output, the same LFO to trigger this voice. Oh, yeah. So there are many ways to achieve interesting shapes for modulation. One of them is sequencing the rate of OCT. So here I have a small sequencer, the ADDR sequencer, going to the rate CV input. And you can see on the scope that we get something with variation, but a bit more uh, repetitive thanks to the sequence. And here I have a voice, I have here the modulo sequencer sequencing uh, terror from, from um, Valley with a nice wavetable loaded going through some reverb. It sounds like this. I'm using the modulation to modulate the wavetable and the timbre, also the color of the voice. If I take it out, if I take the sequencer out from the CV input, you, can, you will see that uh, we get something a bit more simple. But with the sequencer, it adds nice um, edges to the modulation. Okay, now another interesting way to get more unique wave shapes is by mixing the different LFOs like I'm doing here with the mixer from VCV, but also adding another LFO shape to the mix. Here I'm using a saw wave um, and I'm sending it also to another input. Also, this LFO is not synced in any way with the other LFOs from OCT. And on the scope, you can see the result we are getting which is also quite interesting. So this is going to another voice. So I have here Psych, and I'm using a shift register to generate a Ford a note chord by sampling the modulo sequencer. And I'm using this mix signal to modulate the cutoff point of the filter that Psych is going through, a low pass filter, and it sounds like this. So as you can see, Oct can easily make your patches more organic and full of motion. There's so much more to explore with it and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, subscribe and share and have a good one.